going on you guys welcome back to channel anderson today's video is going to be something different it's a modification overview of what's been done to the c55 this is for old subscribers new subscribers and chances are all the modifications that we're going to cover today probably have a video that was made for it back when it was done whenever the mod was done so there may be a few things that don't have videos on it so if we cover that in the video today go ahead and leave a comment down below if you want me to make a video on something you see that doesn't already have a video for it so yeah, that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So basically we're just going to kind of do a walkthrough of the car. I'll point out cosmetic modifications, mechanical modifications. We'll start at the front end, go aesthetically, we'll take a look at the engine bay, go through everything, wheels, brakes, interior, rear of the car, everything. So let's go ahead and start here. First off in the front of the car, you'll notice at the bottom, uh, I have a fog delete on both sides. Uh, I did this myself as well as replaced all of the uh, bumper mesh. Now this one, starting off, is uh, something that I did not make a video for, but you can kind of get the basic understanding of what I did here. This is honeycomb uh, grill that I bought just like off of eBay. Uh, I believe they make it for like Audis because it's more like an Audi pattern grill or Porsche pattern, but uh, I felt like it would look really good on the car. It's kind of a modernized look. I really don't like the uh, metal mesh that they used from factory especially once it gets worn out and the fog light sides had taken a beating. So what I did um, is I basically took the frames, the frames are still there, and measured out my grill piece against the factory metal grill and basically just cut it out and then I used zip ties to connect it to the factory frame. Just there's probably, I don't know, six or seven zip ties around it. And then same thing for the middle thing, just took out our middle uh, grill just took out that wire frame again and same thing throughout the fog lights right now i don't have them coded out so i do get like two messages every time i pop in the car it says check your left and right fog light but uh, i'll probably code them next time i hop, have the car uh, hooked up to star and dos so it doesn't bother me and i didn't need the fog lights so i'm trying to make this car as minimal as possible it is being built uh for you know track usage and auto crossing and things like that so trying to get rid of what I don't need. Uh, everything else in the front is pretty much factory uh, besides a few little things. Um, but I have the star grill. I just put the flying star back on. I had the flat badge before, but I actually feel like this looks really solid on the car. And I actually like it a lot. I used to not like it, but I don't know. Things change as you get older, I guess. So um, I feel like it fits the car, uh, especially where it's at right now. It matches just the overall feel of the car. You'll notice as well, just did this the other day, uh, paint match the side markers. Just something different. I uh, hadn't seen it done before on W203, so I wanted to try it out myself. The paint is not a perfect match. Um, it is the factory color that I got, but you know, spray painting on plastic and trying to get it perfect is uh, not the easiest. So it's pretty, pretty close. It's like pretty indistinguishable when you're just walking by, glancing at it. If you get up closer, you can probably tell subtle differences, but. Um, pretty solid for cheap rattle cans. Um, I used, they're called Harpy Motors, I believe. I bought it off Amazon. And uh, the paint code for this car is uh, Brilliant Silver. It's 744, I believe, like Mercedes 744 paint code. But every paint is going to be different. It's a metallic flake, so it's very hard to replicate from a, from a rattle can. But it got pretty close. I'm happy with it. 
All right, moving on to the sides, my dirty wheels. <laughs> uh, these are supposed to be black. They're a little bit brake dusty right now, but um, these are the Motegi uh, MR146 um, SS6, I believe they're called. They are a Flowforge wheel, and I switched to a 17 inch. So these are 17 by eight and a half, and it's a square setup all around. There's a whole video on this. Um, this is a big thing that I did for the car. And you can also notice I no longer have factory lug bolts. I did a stud conversion from Motorsport Hardware. So I have 90 millimeter um, studs. And also I'm running a 20 millimeter spacer all around as well on all four corners. Um, tires I have Achilles ATR Sport 2s. Can't complain about them. I haven't had them uh, too long, but long enough to get a feel for how they do. And I'm pretty happy with how they perform, especially for the cost you can get them at. I think I got them for like 50 or 60 bucks per tire, uh, plus mounting and balancing. So really affordable, efficient tire, uh, performance tire, or decent performance tire at least. Uh, front brakes are all stock. I can't go six piston, unfortunately, just because I have a 17 inches, but I'm happy with the trade-off. Um, losing quite a bit of weight in the wheels. These are only 17 and a half pounds a piece plus the tires, so I don't know, maybe 35, 40 pounds uh, per side compared to probably, I don't know, 50, 55 pounds per side with the stock setup. I did the math on the video, so you can go check, check back on that and see exactly, but um, yeah. All right, so one thing as well in the front, I can't really show you guys because underneath the car, but I do have um, PowerFlex, uh, upper and lower control arm bushings so i've gotten rid of the stock bushings that use the camber bolt i basically just run a zero camber now with no adjustability that's one of the reasons i'm looking into uh, possibly custom shock tower to change to coilovers with camber plates or um, you know i know guys like uh, f1 suspension the camber king make the adjustable um, control arms but we'll see what i end up doing uh, and then I also have the H&R front sway bar on here that probably can't see as well. All right, moving on to the engine bay. And don't mind, the car is dirty everywhere. So <laughs> yeah, it gets driven and I clean it once in a while, but I'm not a clean freak with this car at all. So yeah, engine bay is not spotless at all. Um, let's see, first off, I have a Odyssey battery, FCP Euro, Lifetime, and Odyssey batteries have a really good reputation cold cranking apps is higher than most um, and still relatively affordable so definitely looking at something like that if you guys are interested in a long lasting battery it's AGM uh, everything else the only thing that I've really done modification wise to the engine um, I'm running AEM dry flow filters underneath the intakes obviously I've I'm playing with the idea of building a custom intake but um, I have some pieces for it and I found pieces that have fit the the factory math but i'm just not sure if i want to end up running or not but we'll see um everything else i mean it's, it's mostly just been maintenance and trying to increase the longevity and reliability of the motor so i do spark plugs pretty much once a year i switch over to traditional um nickel spark plugs or what people call copper spark plugs so there's a video on that as well. I just use uh, NGK, basically the cheapest, cheapest NGK plug you can get for it, but they run really well. If you guys um, know anything about metallurgy or anything like that, um, those traditional spark plugs, they produce kind of a higher heat and a better, uh, better spark in some cases. And after switching to them, uh, my experience has been really positive using them in this motor. I feel like the motor really likes it less resistance from the wires to the plugs again with those as well and just overall it's performed really really well with those plugs they're not going to last as long as the platinums or things like that so uh, like i said i'm planning on changing them out you know every year or two years depending on the mileage um, i really don't drive this car as much as i used to uh, this car used to get about 10 to thirteen thousand miles a year and right now i'm on average for maybe three to five thousand so um, yeah, pretty much down to one oil change a year and limited maintenance. So cool, but wish I could drive it more. But anyways, um, what else in here? I think it's pretty much stock. There's nothing really to see. I used to have, um, 
strut tower bar from Ultra Racing. That's why it's got a little groove cut out of it. And same thing with the uh, rubber molding over there. But it was actually rubbing on the, uh, what's it called, intake box. So I ended up taking that off. I was thinking about building my own, or that's another reason why I was considering, um, you know, building, fly in there. Uh, that's the reason I was considering building my own intake was more so for the track application of being able to get in here and inspect things quickly without having to rip off the air box every time. Um, so that's one kind of pinpoint of why I would think about doing that. Uh, but yeah, ran it for a little while. It was noticeable, um, subtle, but noticeable. But overall, I, you know, I didn't want to ruin the air box by keeping it on there. So took it off. Um, everything else on here, what else? Uh, I'm probably gonna end up doing the water pump relatively soon. I don't know how old this one is um, since you know the M155 just went out. And okay, one big thing that I have done with the engine bay. If you can see down here, I don't know if it'll let me zoom in, but those are the creative steel motor mounts. And I got the um, street daily urethane setting you can get a race urethane insert as well. I think it's about 70A uh, versus 90A or something like that. Um, the street daily is plenty stiff enough. Like the motor literally does not move anymore. And that's probably one of my favorite modifications that I've done to this car. That and the creative steel transmission mount. Probably the biggest like feel changes of the car were those two things. Cause when you have the stock motor mounts, especially if they're worn out at all, your engine is gonna tilt this way when you're taking off. And that naturally causes your car to veer to the right because the engine wants to flex that way, more weight transfer over here, and you're gonna end up you know, curving to the right. With this, you are planted straight. You can mash it, you can do whatever you want, and the car stays planted straight. Um, that was with the automatic and now with the manual, same thing. It's just completely dead even as you're going forward and it just makes the car feel so much more planted, so much more stable and dynamic. And like I said, it's just, it's one of my favorite, favorite modifications I've done. And Creative Steel is one of my favorite companies that produces parts for these chassis and Mercedes in general. So check them out. Uh, I don't have, I have no affiliation with them, not sponsored, not anything. Uh, I paid for the parts myself. Way more affordable than the other competitors out there. And they're proven they're they have like a drag team they do track stuff so it's a proven design and definitely worth looking into if you guys are in the market i would say even even if you're looking for stock mounts these are worth looking into because if you keep the rest of the car stock rubber and stock transmission mount you're hardly going to notice any like nvh um, and the benefits are going to be there so yeah, definitely look at those if you guys are in the market for engine mounts, which these cars always are with the stock mounts because they just they have too much torque. They tear through the stock mounts. So I'm going to close this up and then we'll move on uh, maybe to the back half of the car. All right, one thing before we move on, you guys can see also I have the D&D Performance Interior Banner. Uh, that's one of the car sponsors. So shout out to D&D and keeping the banner on there, running it. I think it looks pretty solid. It kind of matches the feel of the car. And overall, I like actually being in the driver's seat and it kind of gives a little bit, um, I don't know, shade. I, I understand why track cars use them now because it, it makes your vision a little clear. You don't have to worry about, you know, putting out visors or anything like that. I've never had uh, a banner on windshield, but I actually like it a lot. So moving on, let's go ahead to the rear of the car. We have back here, same wheels and everything, but you can see there from a video not too long ago, we upgraded to the four piston rears. These calipers um, were used in all kinds of vehicles, not just Mercedes, but it's a Brembo caliper. I've seen them on everything from Mercedes to Teslas. Um, if you guys look at like Model Ys nowadays, they have the same caliper. Um, the, the only difference is, is the bracket design or whatever else is used with it. But in this case, it's pretty much plug and play, small modifications, but um, these are from an S55, and the rotors are from an SLK55 uh, with the performance package. And I got everything. I got the the uh, calipers from a deal from shout out to Garage Man 01 uh, on eBay. Definitely plugged it with those. I can't even remember what I paid, but it was ridiculous. 
and the rotors I got off FCP Euro. And no, sorry, the rotors I got off of Amazon, get this, for <laughs> 30 bucks for the pair, no lie. Um, I always find random crazy deals on Amazon. So you guys definitely do your internet searching. You can find amazing deals for parts for these cars if you do your due diligence and look around. So they are Ray Bestos, they're like the highest performance, whatever. I wanted solid rotors for both front and rear, but nobody really makes them for these cars. Um, the stock rears were solid, but uh, you can really only find the performance package and the AMG stuff with drilled and slotted. So it's a little more prone to cracking, but um, this should be okay. It should last quite a while. So I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, I wish, I wish somebody made solid rotors for these cars. If you guys know of anything, let me know for sure. Um, moving on to the rear, we have all the stock badges still. I've considered the idea of removing stock badges and putting um, like AMG icon logo here. I have one already, um, but I don't know. Uh, I'm torn about it. I feel like debadging the car. It's like the car <laughs> earned these badges and I feel like debadging it. It's like taking away its soul. I don't know. So. <laughs> we'll see i'm kind of weird about that but uh down here you can see stock mufflers are no longer sitting here but they could be if i wanted to because what i did was made a v-band uh, attachment right here and i have three different exhaust setups basically i have this one where it just dumps after the diff i have uh, one where it's a single three inch pipe with a titanium turn down and i have the stock setup so i can run either one of those three. I've been using this just because it's the lightest weight. It sounds amazing and it's not too loud. It doesn't drone. Um, so I'm really happy with it. I'll, let, I'll give you guys a sound clip in this video as well. Uh, it sounds really good. I still have the, the resonator. I have secondary cats deleted and I still have my primary cats. Maybe one day I'll get long tubes or something like that or shorty headers and delete the uh, primary cats. But for now, uh, they flow still really well. Um, I think they're like uh, 400 or, or 600 cell from the factory, but they got them right by the time they got to these cars, the C55s. Um, the primaries usually last a really long time and uh, flow pretty well. So I'm happy with them. You guys might be able to see as well the h and r rear sub uh sway bar and uh we have that in the front as well also have uh stainless brake lines front and rear these are from uh, stop tech and we have the stock uh, springs uh, ibach makes the stock springs for the amgs and i changed to a number four pad and i have uh, KYB gas adjust shocks in the rear with polyurethane bushings um, for stoppers. So that kind of sums up most of uh, the outside of the car and mechanical aspect. So now let's dive into the interior of the car and we can talk about one more major mechanical difference. <laughs> Alright, so welcome to the interior. As you can see, we have Recaro pole position seats. And right there is what I was talking about, the big mechanical difference between this and most C55s. From my knowledge, uh, this is only the second C55 in the world with a manual swap. There's been, you know, a handful of them uh, for M113s in general and Mercedes in general. But as far as I know, and you guys can totally correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know everything, but from scouring the internet and researching, I think this is the second in the world um, that's been manual swapped. Uh, so you can see down here, got three pedals <laughs> and I'm running the cheap track mod. This is a uh, skateboard grip tape that I've just cut out to the shape of the pedals. 
I like it a lot more than running these uh, rubber rubberized metal pedals. These might look a little better, but these are much more functional and I'm all about function over form in most cases while still making it, you know, relatively uh, aesthetically pleasing. So that is that three pedals. Everything from the swap is out of Mercedes products. So um, or Chrysler when Chrysler and Mercedes were still uh, partnered. So some things like the transmission was out of a crossfire, but it's used in uh, C classes and the SLKs. Um, the clutch pedal assembly is out of a W203 from Europe. I believe it was like a diesel model, but they should be all the same part number for the clutch pedals. And the shifter assembly is where it gets kind of custom. You guys can go back and watch the whole swap video to see how everything was done. Um, the shift linkage and all that stuff was out of a crossfire, but we had to do some major customization. I actually just got another unit from Germany. I'll overlay that now um, that I'm going to be trying to build um, a hard mount shifter out of and do some modifications. Also try to do a short throw. Two other things I forgot to mention as well that you guys see right here is a stereo delete. And I also have the little aluminum door pins that replace the stock plastic ones. Yeah, just wanna throw that in there. This actual shift assembly right here, I built myself um, along with the DND shift knob. Shout out to them again. Beautiful carbon Kevlar shift knob, weighted shift knob as well. Um, but the aluminum base, this is just aluminum stock, 60 millimeter aluminum stock. And I basically just cut it down to my size and then uh, threaded the top portion and tap the bottom portion and thread it onto the factory um, shift rod. So it's very solid and it feels very nice, nice weight to it. Um, and the throws aren't uh, that long actually, even with how long the shifter is. It's not crazy long, I mean, definitely longer than factory, but the factory shifter from the crossfires is actually pretty short throw already. So even with adding this extension on, uh, it's not bothersome at all. It feels very good when driving. Uh, but like I said, I'm working on a short throw just for you know track applications, having as short a throw as possible. Um, while still functional would be, would be uh, the go-to. So other things, uh, steering wheel, I redid this myself um, probably a year and some change ago. I used uh, Angelus leather paint, same paint I used to uh, change the seat from gray to black. And that stuff, I know it from the sneaker community, is very, very durable. It's uh, pliable, it's, it's made for leather. And yeah, you can, you can mess with it, you can do whatever you want to it, and it's very, very durable. So I blacked out the plus and minus buttons on the steering wheel, just as a little subtle change. And then back here, <laughs> No more uh, paddle buttons. I thought about putting them back in, but I used to have the G paddles, gave way to a subscriber, shout out to Dylan. Um, but yeah, now I just left them open, you know, a little bit of weight saved. <laughs> I'm trolling, but anyways. Um, everything else, the cluster now, it reads like a manual. So like it doesn't have, I'll show you guys actually. So the cluster no longer reads the um, gear selector anymore. It's just the mileage and whatever you put it to um, as far as your, your button controls and your steering wheel. So everything's still there, but yeah, just no more uh, gear selector controls. Uh, in the future, I'm possibly thinking about doing a quick release setup. Haven't decided yet for sure. Um, but if I do so, I'll have to relocate these buttons. So it's not crazy hard, it's doable, but uh, it will take some modification for sure. And I'm still very torn about it because I do love this factory wheel. It's not that bad. It's uh, very comfortable. It's fairly lightweight and obviously has an airbag. So telescoping, all the good stuff. So yeah, it'll be hard to get rid of that if I do. Still very torn about that, like I said. Uh, what else interior of the car? I have the rubber mats. It's dirty, that's about it. <laughs> in the rear, I still keep my uh, son's car seat base in here just in case he wants to take a ride in here. And uh, yeah, it's all relatively stock. I redid the fabric not too long ago. 
it always turns up purple on the camera, but um, it's kind of like a dark charcoal gray right now. I don't know if you guys can see that. It always turns a different color on camera, but anyways, it's kind of like a dark, darkish charcoal gray. I would like to do another coat on there so it turns like solid black, but we'll get to it when I get to it. Um, the other thing I've done, I blacked out the Ricardo logo. It's not perfect. Kind of bled over into the fabric, but don't care. I really just didn't want people seeing like those bright Recaro white logos from outside of the car. I want it to be kind of subtle, so blacked out both of them. Uh, this one, I still have leftover paint on here. I need to clean this off. It just scrapes off, but I just haven't done it yet. I've been lazy doing other stuff. All right, shout out to D&D &D again. Subtle, subtle little sticker there. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Trunk of the car, moving blanket. Oh, one big thing, forgot about. So rear of the car as well. I have the ultra racing. Uh, one of them is for the strut mounts and the other one is a chassis mount between the rear of the seats. These in combination with the h &R sway bars make for like a perfect setup. Car is very controllable now, no more understeer whatsoever. Controllable oversteer when you want it. But besides that, uh, it just makes car feel a lot more rigid having both of those in place. Uh, what else? Keep some Marvel's Mystery Oil. I don't know if you guys are a fan, but I use that stuff every once in a while in the gas tank. Uh, keep a torque wrench on hand just in case. And down below here, I just got the factory tools. No longer have the factory spare. No use for it. Um, I don't have lug, lug nuts that would work for it anyways, so. Oh well. <clears throat> All right guys, well, I think that's pretty much gonna do it right there. Quick little modification overview. And if you guys have any questions, as always, leave them down below. I'm happy to answer, try to reply to everybody. Like I said, this car is trying to be built for track usage and uh, auto crossing, so. Um, this year, the big thing that I wanna get tackled is uh, the suspension. So coilovers and figuring out whatever plan I have for uh, having the front camber uh, be adjustable. So we'll see. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Got more to go. So if you guys want to follow the journey, think about subscribing, hit the like. You guys know the drill, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.